Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the differences between Hibernate and JDBC. So first of all, in order to understand this debate, you need to know what is JDBC. So JDBC is a low-level API. It's part of the JDBC. JDK and its sole purpose is to connect your Java programs to relational databases like DB2 or MySQL. Um, it's not object oriented and so when we develop Java applications we develop them in an object oriented way. Databases aren't object oriented and so there's something called an impedance mismatch between a relational database in your Java code. So JDBC is great for connecting to databases, querying databases, and updating databases. But in order to do that, you need to know SQL, and you need to understand the structure of that relational database. And so that creates a, a greater expectation on your Java developers. So then what is Hibernate? Well, as I said, there's an impedance mismatch between a database and a Java application. Javas are object oriented, relational databases are highly structural. That creates problems um, because when you query a database or update a database you have to kind of do a transformation between your Java code and the underlying database. Hibernate and JPA frameworks like Hibernate, what they do is they provide that database mapping for you. So developers don't have to worry about writing code that maps their Java application to their backend database. And so Hibernate itself doesn't necessarily replace JDBC. Instead, it's built on top of JDBC and abstracts away the JDBC implementations. And so it addresses that impedance mismatch. Um, Hibernate often referred to as an object relational mapping tool. And you can see here, uh, I've created a Java uh, entity. It's called tent um, and it has a, a couple of properties and you can see on this Java component um, how it's got an annotation on it that says at entity and it has another annotation on it that says at ID at generated value. Those are hibernate annotations, JPA annotations, that tell the Java program how to map this data, this Java component to the underlying database. So which is better? Well, I guess it depends on your needs. Um, do you want to use Hibernate or just pure JDBC? Again, Hibernate builds on top of JDBC, but when you use it, you are abstracting away a lot of that low-level JDBC and SQL code. Now, what kind of skills do your developers have? Are they very strong database developers? If that's the case, maybe they're comfortable just doing pure JDBC. That might be easier for them. Uh, how complex is your program? If you just have very simple databases and very simple queries going back and forth, it's not onerous to use JDBC to interact between your application and your database. Um, however, as applications get larger, uh, that task becomes more complicated. So if you actually have a, a complicated backend database, you might actually want to uh, start contemplating the use of Hibernate. It might also depend on what your deployment target is. Uh, if it's a micro device, uh, you might not have the same access and ability to use JPA. Uh, on the other hand, if you're using a, a Java J2EE application server, well, JPA and JPA is built right into that application server, so it's a standard part of it. Now I should mention that Hibernate is an eponym of JPA. So uh, you know how we often say the word Kleenex when actually what we mean is facial tissue? Uh, a lot of times when people say Hibernate, what they really mean is just JPA. So there were a lot of competing implementations of uh, object relational mapping tools in Java maybe 10, 15 years ago. And they were all a little, little bit different, even though they were all accomplishing the same basic task. Uh, it was decided that we would standardize the methods, the classes, the mappings, the annotations that all of these different implementations use, and we put it under the specification called JPA, or the Java Persistence API. So when we talk about mapping between Java applications and a backend database, usually we're, we're talking about JPA, uh, this, that specification. Um, and Hibernate is an implementation of that spec. 
And so JPA is just the, the methods and components that you would call in your programs, but somebody actually needs to implement that behind the scenes. And Hibernate is an implementation. And there's other, there's TopLink, there's OpenJPA, there's Data Nucleus. Hibernate isn't the only one in town. However, Hibernate is probably the most popular, if not the most popular open source framework. Uh, and they, they really were leaders in driving the advancement of uh, that of, of object relational mapping about 10 or 15 years ago. So right now, quite often people say the word hibernate when really what they mean is any JPA implementation. Uh, so hibernate kind of gets used interchangeably with the word JPA when in fact, when people talk about hibernate, what they really mean is, you know, any product that provides an implementation of the Java Persistence API. So just keep that in mind. A JPA is the specification. Hibernate is one of the many competitors that implements that spec. And there you go. That's the difference between JDBC and Hibernate.